running out of love never get enough we never seem to get older when things are going right you seem to have the time but when it's hard you just grow cold up I'm about to get started making dinner and you guys have been asking me for some recipe inspiration lately. So we are going to start out today's video with a quick and easy family favorite crock pot recipe. Okay, so we're going to be making chicken enchiladas in the crock pot today. This is one of my favorite recipes and just in general, I love crock pot cooking, especially in like the fall and winter time. It's my favorite way to prepare meals for my family. But anyway, I have my small crock pot out today because that's all that I need, but you could totally double or triple this recipe if you have a large family or you want to make some freezer meals. And so then you would use like a larger crock crock pot of course. I think this one is like three and a half or four quarts and it's plenty of space for what I'm going to be making. So this is super simple dump and go. There's only three ingredients to start and then we'll have two more about an hour before I pull it out of the crock pot. So five ingredients total, super simple and it starts out with some butcher box organic chicken breast. You can see that I have one pack here. I love Butcher Box. They have like superior meat selections by far and it's so like hearty. So you can see it's completely thawed out and there's two chicken breasts in here and they're already like trimmed and everything so I don't need to do anything to prepare the meat besides take it out of the packaging. This is going to be enough to feed my family of four. Could probably feed a family of six because this makes leftovers for us but if you have a larger family or if you're wanting freezer meals like I said you would want to double or triple this. So this is going to be two chicken breasts for every four people. But anyway, I'm gonna get this out of the packaging and dump it into the crock pot and then show you what else I use. Okay, so my second ingredient is just one package of taco seasoning. I know a ton of people when they make enchiladas they don't use this, but I do feel like it adds just a little something extra special and it's just so easy to just dump it in. This is the old El Paso brand, but I've also had the Aldi brand of taco seasoning, which is pretty spicy. So if you like a little extra kick, I would definitely recommend the Aldi brand. And I've also used the Target brand, I think it's called Good and Gather, which is very comparable to old El Paso. They just didn't have any the last time I went grocery shopping. So this is what I have. I know if you have a big container, I think it would be two tablespoons of taco seasoning. And then my last ingredient to start with is just one can of mild red enchilada sauce. This is the Market Pantry brand, which is the Target brand. You'll need two of these total, but just one to start with. And I just pour it right over top. You can see my chicken breast in the bottom, the taco seasoning on top, and I just pour the entire can in there. And then get my lid on and set it to high for three hours, but if you are doing this before you go to work, you can totally put it on low all day long. And then about an hour before it's done cooking, we'll come back for the other two ingredients. Okay, so this has been cooking for about two and a half to three hours now, and it's smelling so good. The chicken's cooked all the way through, but you can see that it's very liquidy in there from that enchilada sauce. So I am going to shred up the chicken, and then we're going to add in our last two ingredients. I have a whole block of Colby Jack cheese and I'm going to shred that up. You could absolutely get pre-shredded cheese, but I just feel like it melts better and tastes better when you shred it yourself. So I'm going to shred the whole thing and use half of it in the crock pot and then half of it later on. And then I also have a can of refried beans and this is my secret ingredient. So my kids don't eat like whole beans or anything 
I know some of you are going to be able to relate, but I can add this in here and they can't even tell the difference and it makes it less liquid and more like creamy and smooth, adds some protein into the dish and it just makes it like a heartier enchilada. So anyway, I do need to get out a little fork to start shredding and I'm going to add in these other ingredients. Okay, so I probably should have called these smothered burritos instead of enchiladas because I am adding beans to them and they are way heartier. I feel like than just a regular chicken and cheese enchilada and so so good but anyway I'm just going to shred up that chicken and then add in that full can of refried beans and I swear by this if you have picky eaters or kids that will not eat beans try these refried beans especially these ones from Aldi I find some brands might have still chunks of whole beans in them but these do not they are so creamy if your kids don't mind beans though some whole pinto beans or black beans would taste just as good and then I'm going to add in half of that block of Colby Jack cheese and just mix it all together and let it hang out in the crock pot for like 30 to 45 minutes until everything gets warmed through and is nice and creamy and melty but still stiff enough that you could add it into the tortilla and roll it with no problem. While I have my cheese grater out I am going to shred the other half of that block of cheese and then just set it aside because when I roll everything up I will add another can of enchilada sauce and this cheese on top. Half a block is more than enough for my family, but if you like yours extra cheesy, feel free to add even more to this recipe. It is so flexible, you can kind of just make it your own. But while that is hanging out in the crock pot for that 30 to 45 minutes, I'm going to clear off my kitchen table and then wipe it down with my Jaws hardwood cleaner. Technically, this is not hardwood. I'm pretty sure it's manufactured wood, but I still love using this Jaws wood cleaner. I feel like it's so gentle while still being efficient and cleaning everything off, and it has kept the tabletop in brand new condition so I'm just going to continue using it because I do really like it and while I'm over in this area I noticed that I had laundry that needed to be switched over. I recently pulled all of our fall pillow covers off when I did our Halloween decorating and throw blankets and things like that so I wanted to wash them before I store them away. That's what was in the washer and I'm putting into the dryer and then of course I had a full load of towels that needed to be folded and put away. I swear we use like every single one of our towels and washcloths it feels like every other day I am having to wash these I don't know what's going on I mean I guess that's a good thing because it means we're being clean and having good hygiene but I swear I am folding towels every single day you guys will have to let me know if it feels like that for you or if maybe I just don't have enough of them and I need to buy another set or something but I I don't know what it is. Just this season of life since school started back, I feel like I can never catch up on this type of laundry. So anyway, I'm going to fold all of these and then get them put away in our linen closet. And then in the living room, which is the room that I'm in right now, I have a bunch of things that I needed to tidy up. I had recently decluttered in Sawyer's bedroom just some toys and clothes and things that she was no longer playing with or using. And I just kind of let them spill out over into the living room floor and then left them there for days. I'm sure absolutely none of you are surprised to hear that. I am the queen of starting a project and then stopping right here and letting things just hang out on the floor in the wrong room forever. But anyway, I'm going to get them all boxed up and then put that in the back of my car so that I could remember to take it to our local women and children's shelter sooner rather than later. Whenever we have a bunch of toys and, and like kids clothes to donate, I definitely prefer to donate to our local women and children's shelter instead of Goodwill just because I know that they are always in need of those things and they put it to better use in my opinion then at Goodwill. So anyway, I'm just going to get the floors tidied up and then vacuum and do some more routine cleaning in here. And while I do this, I'll go ahead and play you some music.
Okay, it has been about 30 minutes since I added in the last two ingredients and really you would only need to wait maybe 10 or 15 for the cheese to melt, but I just like to give it a little longer so it could get nice and thick and creamy. That way your filling isn't like falling out of your enchiladas. So anyway, look at how yummy this is looking. I wish you guys could smell it for real. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. I have some burrito sized tortillas here and this is what I like to use to make the enchiladas. It just makes really big hearty enchiladas. So I'm gonna start rolling these in just a second, but first I need to preheat my oven to 350 and grab my caraway pan. These pans are seriously worth all of the hype. They are so good, non-toxic, non-stick. I won't need any cooking spray or anything. And this should be large enough for all of my enchiladas. So anyway, I've got my little assembly line here. I need to grab one more can of that enchilada sauce, but I'm going to start assembling all of my enchiladas and get this into the oven. When I get these all assembled, I like to use these really big burrito sized tortillas. These ones just came from Aldi, but you can find them at any grocery store. They're just really, really cheap at Aldi. But anyway, I use this burrito size and I put about three really full spoonfuls of that filling into the center and then just roll it up. I don't worry about tucking the ends because with adding the refried beans, it soaks up all of that extra enchilada sauce. And so the filling isn't really runny and it never spills out of the sides of it. However, if you're not adding in any beans or anything to thicken it up or even using a smaller size tortilla, you may want to just tuck the ends in while you're rolling to keep that all nice and neat. But anyway, once I get everything filled up here, you can see I'm going to pull out a couple of more and just add that extra filling into them. But when I get all of these tortillas filled and rolled and put into my casserole dish, it's just a standard 9 by 13 dish. Then I'm going to go ahead and add one can of red enchilada sauce over the top. I had mentioned in the beginning of the recipe that I would be using another one and this is what I use it for just to put all over these tortillas. It is so yummy this way. And then I'm going to add in all of that Colby Jack cheese. This was half a block of shredded cheese. You could totally add more if you want, but this is just perfect for my family. And then I'm going to add some tin foil over the top and pop this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 25 minutes. It is so delicious that way. But anyway, you can see that now my countertops are a mess and I desperately need to start tidying up around the kitchen and just get ahead of the cleaning. So I'm going to do that in just a second, but first I had a couple packages to open. I have this package here that I figured I'd open with you guys. There's like nothing on the box to tell you what it is, but I ordered some liquid IV, mostly for dairy. Eric. <laughs> He has a really hard time drinking enough water and staying hydrated throughout the day. I thought that having something like this would help a ton with our whole family. Sawyer just got over a week and a half of being sick with RSV, I'm pretty sure it was, or some kind of similar virus, an upper respiratory virus for sure. And uh, this can just help a ton. So anyway, I thought I'd unbox it with you guys. Clearly I am stocking up, but I just didn't want to take any chances. I wanted to make sure we had enough, especially for the start of cold and flu season. So I did get two boxes of this hydration multiplier. It's an electrolyte drink mix. And this one is the passion fruit flavor. And then I also got the lemon lime flavor for Derek and I. It's kind of like Gatorade or Powerade, but cleaner ingredients and better for you. You can see that it's non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, made in the U.S. with no preservatives, artificial flavors, sweeteners, or colors. So it's super clean, but will still keep you hydrated. And then I saw this watermelon flavor, so I had a big box of that because I thought that we would probably really like it. There's 16 sticks in this one, but in those smaller boxes, there's 10 sticks. 
And this is just that same electrolyte drink mix. But then I also saw this immune support drink mix with vitamin C and Wellmune. And I figured that definitely can't hurt since Sawyer's had a virus. None of us want to get it. So we can start drinking this as kind of a preventative measure. But anyway, if you want to check out Liquid IV, this video is not sponsored. But I think I do have like a discount link or something. So if I do, I'll leave that information down in the description box. Live your life within the moment, moment And don't go wait until the morning, morning You never know when it is over, over All that I know is we'll get older, older So let us dance this side away I wish that I had smell-o-vision. Oh my gosh. This is smelling so good. Look how melty and cheesy. Oh, I'm sorry. It's fogging up my camera. This is smelling and looking so delicious, and I am starving right now. So I'm going to go ahead and plate this up for everybody. So Derek typically will eat two of these smothered burritos, but by the end of the second one, he's usually groaning and saying that he ate too much and he's feeling too full. I think it's just because this is such a high-protein meal. It fills you up fast and leaves you feeling full and satisfied for the entire evening. But anyway, I usually give him two, and then... Kinsley and Sawyer will split one and I will eat one and that leaves us two to use as leftovers for lunch the next day or leftover night. But for the girls, I just put some sour cream on theirs and for me and Derek, I put sour cream and hot pickled jalapenos. Also, the sweet and spicy jalapenos from Trader Joe's are really delicious on this, but I just didn't have any this night. But anyway, I just wanted to show you all of the leftovers that we've got. Derek and I will share this for lunch the next day or have it for a leftover night during the weekday when I get busy. Either way, this is so, so good, and I hope you guys try this recipe. If you do, tag me on Instagram, social media, send me pictures, and let me know how you like it because this is definitely a family favorite and a staple in our fall and winter meal plan. But anyway, that is going to be everything for today's video. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today, and I'll see you all in the next one.